Y'all did not ever think this day was going to come, but this day is here. Today is the day. I wouldn't think of that, but since y'all went old school, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we, uh, God is good and all the time. I mean, hey, we keep it, you know. Look, man. <laughs> oh boy. Man, hey, hey, don't don't get me started. Don't get me started. I know it was the blood. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. All right. So um, the day that I'm talking about is the day that you didn't think would ever get here, but today is the day. What day is that, Pastor? Today is the day that finally, 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 say finally, finally. after weeks and weeks and weeks of leaning and learning into the story and the journey and the testimony of David, today, David is finally going to face the giant. Okay. What? Six weeks, we've been... We're all, we're there. Okay. Can I tell you though a little secret? Mm -hmm. sure. It's a little secret. I'm sure you know this by now. I spilled the beans a little bit last week, but, but even though we've literally spent six weeks looking at the real life story of David and Goliath, what we've really been doing over the last six weeks is we've been dealing with spiritual warfare. We've been dealing with spiritual warfare. See, every message over the last six weeks, every message going back to the very beginning, you remember when I said that, that if Satan can't take you out, he'll try to wear you out? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, remember the, the, the message we talked about that our faith or our fear is determined by what we focus on. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So, unquestionably, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Goliath was real. All the historical events we've talked about, they all happen, but, but all of these events that we've talked about over the last few weeks, they all lead to a spiritual truth. And that spiritual truth simply tells us how to engage and how to encounter uh, our enemy. So even though we saw this over the last few weeks, we saw this through a young warrior or, 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 or through the perspective of a giant, it really wasn't about them at all. See, Goliath, he is symbolic of, of so much more than just a giant. He's so much more uh, symbolic than just an obstacle or a problem that seems to, to kind of tilt the odds against us. Can I just tell you that Goliath is spiritual warfare in the flesh? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Think about that. Goliath is spiritual warfare in the flesh all of his tactics right all of his all of the fear all of the intimidation all of that all of that having think that we're outnumbered have all of that having us think that we're weak and that we're overpowered all of that are weapons that each of us face every single day amen Every single day we have somebody telling us, oh, we're not enough. Every single day we have something trying to instill fear in us. Every single day we have something that's trying to put doubt in us. Every single day we have something that's trying to shake our faith at its core. That's right. That's true. Yeah. All of his tactics. You remember last week, I gave you all the clue. I told you, how will you know? If you are in spiritual warfare, how will you know? Because you're alive and breathing. Amen. That's right. Y'all remembered. Y'all listened from last week. If you are alive, if you are breathing, you are in spiritual warfare. So, we told you last week that whatever level of attack that you're at, whatever level of attack you are facing, that we are cured and not cursed because of Christ. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So look, I don't want to waste any time. Uh, I want to go ahead and jump back into the battle right where we left off last week in first Samuel. And I want us to just look at a couple of truths uh, that we can take away uh, as we look at these last few verses that we will cover in first Samuel today, chapter 17, uh, verses 45 through 51 as we close this out. All right. So let me give you a little bit of recap. So up to last week, we had gotten to the point that David is now on the scene. He's already gone through the whole armor thing with Saul and he's, he's responded to the call. So now David goes and he gathers five smooth stones out of the brook and he is now gone through the valley and now he stands waiting to engage with the giant. And so now he, he, he's standing there and he's just waiting. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. And so now from the other side, here comes Goliath in all of his mass humanity. Here he comes. Here he comes. And on the way, Goliath gets so offended because, again, he, he looks and he sees what's standing there. He sees what, what, what's getting ready to greet him. And as I said last week, he gets so offended that, that, that Goliath basically begins to curse. He's like, how dare you disrespect me and my manhood by sending that out to face me? I'm a man. I, I don't know what that is. And so Goliath gets so upset, the Bible says that he begins to curse. And he begins to curse in the name of his God, Dagon. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And in doing that, what did he do? He exposed the spiritual battle now that's going on between the one true God and all the false gods. Right. Y'all, y'all know the story, right? Y'all know who Dagon is. You know that he was a half man. He was a half fish. Somebody told me, he said, when you said merman last week, we said it too. He was a merman God of, of, of the old days. Right. And this is the, the statue. There was a statue of him made of stone. There was this big, huge statue that when they brought the presence of the Lord in and they set it right beside when they set the Ark of the Covenant right beside the statue of Dagon, that statue literally bowed twice. It fell down one time and they picked it back up. It fell down a second time and what? The head and the arms were gone, right? They, they were off. Again, and that signalized what? No power, no authority. So think about that. You got all you got, there's a fish tail. Just standing, arms gone, head gone. But here's the interesting thing. We didn't get a chance to talk about this last week. Is not only is that image, when we see that this thing has bowed down twice, we see and we realize that not only is it indicative of the power that God has over everything, amen, but it's also a prophetic insight. It's a prophetic for, uh, foreshadowing of exactly what's going to happen to Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this morning, I want to give you a title. You ready? Yeah. Here it is. Cut it off so it can't kill you. Cut it off so it can't kill you. Wow. Say it with me. Cut it off, Cut it off. So, it so it can't kill you. So now <laughs> there's a saying that I know that we all have used in this room that if you are extremely busy, if you find your, you know, let's say I'm, I'm coming and going, like, like if you just got so much going on, uh, you, we've all used this expression, I'm going to start it, I'm going to let you finish it. We're so busy, it's like we are running around like a chicken with, a head cut off. Chicken with their head, anybody ever use that expression before? I am that. We all have shit, Robert says I am that. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the deal. 
I didn't grow up on a farm, right? I'm a city boy, right? City boy. I didn't have any chickens in my backyard growing up. Now, that's not to say that somebody in the Hayes household didn't. Uh, uh, someone had some chickens growing up in their backyard. Any, anybody have chickens in there? I, I know Jerry did. I, I didn't have to ask that. Who else had chickens? Uh, about, a lot of y'all have chickens growing up. OK, 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 all right. So um, uh, how can I say it? So those of you that had chickens in your backyard growing up, when it was dinner time, uh, you didn't go to Smith's or Albertson's. You just went out to the backyard. Am I right? And you just selected one, and you just kind of Right? I, I, I didn't do it. I'm just saying, so far I'm getting yeses. That's, that, that's OK. All right. Now, I heard this. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I heard that if you were to remove the head or separate the head from the chicken, OK, that if you put the chicken on the ground, the chicken will run off. Right? But somebody told me if it bumps into something that the meat is no longer good. Is that true? No. <laughs> Y'all like, no, nah, we still ate that joke. Right? He bumped into three or four. We still. <laughs> We're talking this morning. Sabrina said uh, <laughs> there was, uh, was it Ruth? Told you that there was a chicken that lived for what, 18 days? 18 months. 18 months without a head. Yeah. Oh, my word. Oh, wow. Well, that, that kind of proves the point. Um, so here's the situation. You have a chicken without a head, still runs around, right? And what it shows us is this. The chicken shows us, watch this, there can still be life in the body without the head. I'm talking some spiritual principles now. There can still be life in the body, even when the head is gone. OK? okay. Now, on a creepier note, not as if that wasn't creepy enough, I was watching a show the other day. And this guy, for some reason, he was hunting rattlesnakes. I hate snakes. Anybody like snakes? Ew. I'm not shaking your hand anymore. Ah, uh, look, I'm just going to say it. The only good snake is a dead snake. That's it. That's it. I'm not trying to see if he's red and yellow or yellow and black. I'm not trying to see the colors. I'm not trying to see the shape of his head. I don't care. Yes. So this guy is hunting. He's searching rattlesnakes because he wants to eat one. So he finds the snake, and he cuts his head off. And guess what? Head's on the ground. No. no body, but the head still trying to bite. Again, I'm telling you some spiritual principles today. There can be life in the head, even though the body is gone. So, again, we're talking today. Cut it off so it can't kill you. Right. So, again, we get to this point now, and here's David. David is waiting. He, he, he's answered the call. He's standing. He's, he's waiting to engage. Now, this Philistine, this, this giant, he's already made some bold predictions about what's going to happen to David on that day. He's going in with great confidence, great self-assuredness that by the time this day is over, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to feed you to all of these birds, all of these animals, is what Goliath said. Yep. So, here's David. 
And now David responds to what Goliath tells him. We're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 and 46. It says this, David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. But me, I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies. The God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. Today, not tomorrow, not next week, this very day, the Lord will conquer you. I'm going to kill you and I'm going to cut your head off. Hello? Hello? I ain't stopping there. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut your head off. And all your partners over there, I'm going to get them too. Killing all of them. The dead bodies of your men, I'm going to give them to the birds, to the wild animals, so the whole world will know there's a God in Israel. Amen. 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 Now, as I was looking at this, I was praying, I was like, Lord, what's going on here? Give me some insight. Give me some revelation. And, and the thing that the Lord kept pointing me was, was this, is that, is that David mentions three things. David says that you come at me with sword, with spear, and javelin. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Say it. Sword, sword spear, spear, and javelin. Yeah. So David says, you are coming at me with sword, with spear, and with javelin. And I started to think, like, like Lord, what does that mean? And, and the Lord began to, 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 to kind of show it to me. It's like, like, like the sword, the spear, and the javelin, watch this, they were designed to hurt you from various distances. Yeah. Yeah. See, if you are close, I can use a sword. If you're not so close, I can use a spear. And if you're even further away, I can get you with a javelin. Now, I can get you all three ways. Yeah. See, the enemy, like we're talking about spiritual warfare, right? See, the enemy, the enemy moves the same way. The enemy's like, yeah, I can attack you at any distance. I can attack you close up. I can attack you if you're not so far. I can attack you if you are far away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> okay, let, 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 me, let me connect it even more. Enemy will attack you how many ways? Three. Three different ways, right? Close, not so close, and even far. But watch this. The Lord revealed this to me. It's like the enemy is, is, is operating. He's saying this. Not only am I attacking you different distances, but watch this. I'm going to attack you through your past, through your present, and through your future. You got that right. Yep, yep, yep. That, that's close. <laughs> the present and then the future. So David now speaks. And David, he speaks from a completely different place. Goliath is talking solely out of self-confidence. But David now speaks in confidence in God. Right? right? So, 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 so David... <laughs> I love this. This is so awesome. David turns around again and says, look, not only t today, no, 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 my brother. See, see, you aren't feeding me to the birds. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> see, see, I'm going to feed you to the birds. <laughs> I'm going to feed you to the wild animals. <laughs> I'm going to feed your, I'm going to feed all of them too. The birds, too. Matter of fact, I, if you're an animal around these parts or a bird, it's going to be a good day because we're going to have a Philistine buffet for all, for all of these animals and birds to eat as much all you can eat. A-Y-C-E, Philistines, on that day. All you can eat. 
I've learned, if, if I hadn't learned anything about being in Vegas, it's that AYC. Oh, you can eat. <laughs> y'all know, wait, 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 there's this song. Um, I know y'all know it. Hold on a second. Go ahead and add Philistines to that list. Because that's, that's what David is saying. I'm going to add Philistines along with my greens, my beans, and all. I'm going to add Philistines to it as well. <laughs> all right. So, let's get back to the Bible, shall we? Very Verse 48 says this. So watch this. So David, I'm sorry, as Goliath, watch this, moved closer to attack, David ran out quickly to meet him. Yep. What? Reaching into his shepherd's bag, taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The Philistine stumbled and fell face down in the ground. Which brings me to my first point today, which is this. Spiritual warfare tips. You ready? Yes. Here it is. It's what's in the heart, not the hand. It's what's in the heart. Not the hand. See, see, David, he had nothing but a sling and he had five smooth stones. And, 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 and here he is, and, and, and he had tools that, that didn't seem like they'd be enough. I mean, this guy's got armor and he's got uh, swords and spears and he's got all of this. And it, didn't, it wouldn't seem like, like, like a sling and stones are enough. But here's the thing. The thing is, it's not the weapons that bring victory. It was the heart of the guy that held the weapon. Man. You see, the truth is this, is long before David was a warrior, David was a worshiper. Right. He was a worshiper. See, 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 David, he won this battle back when he was out there tending sheep. Back when he was out there, that, that's when he, when he was out there worshiping is when he won this battle. Amen. So, the, 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 now, now here's the application for us. See, 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 the challenge for us is that everyone, and I mean everyone, I don't think there's somebody I'm talking to in here or somebody who's listening to me online right now that this is not applied to. But what I mean when I say everyone, I mean everyone measures everything by what we have in our hands. We all measure by our resources, by our talents, by our skill, by our, uh, uh, by our looks. We measure everything by, by, by what we can see, by, 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 by what's in our hands. We measure how much do I weigh? How much, we, we measure. And the Bible says this, that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. Amen? Yes. Amen. So here's my second observation today is this. So the Bible says, again, that David ran quickly out to meet him. Y'all see that? Yeah. Yes. Here's the second thing when it comes to spiritual warfare. You ready? Yeah. Run to the fight, not away from it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. All right. All right. Run to the fight and not away from it. Here is David standing there. Philistine comes and he starts running at the enemy. Why does David start running at the enemy? He starts running at the enemy for the same reason that you and I can run at the enemy. Because David knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this fight wasn't his alone, that the victory belongs to the Lord. 
So what does that mean for us? What that means for us is simply this. Oftentimes, all of us, we all face our own type of Goliath. We all face the taunting. We all face the threats. We all face the mocking circumstances. We all face things that seem to be impossible. We all face situations that bring doubt or introduce fear into our lives. So how are we to approach it when it happens? We're supposed to do like David does. Right? Yeah. But see, can I be honest with us? Yeah. Too often in life, when we are faced with that threat, when we're faced with that, with, with that circumstance, when we're faced with that mocking, when we're faced with that taunting, when we're faced with the things that make us doubt, and we have the opportunity to run to it, we <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. We have an opportunity to run to it, but we we run away. We run away. You want to know how to confuse the devil? Yeah. Sure. How you confuse the devil is simply this. Run toward him. Run toward him. The next time this stuff comes up, don't run away. Run toward him. It will confuse the you know what out of him. Because he's going to see you running at him. He's going to be like, wait, wait, hold up. Why isn't this working? The last time I threw that one at her, she turned tail and run. But today, why isn't it working? The last time I sent this circumstance in their life, why isn't it working? Faith. Faith. Because again, faith tells me that I haven't been, nor will I ever be alone. Faith tells me that victory belongs to Jesus. Faith tells me that I get a medal even though I hadn't done any work. Okay. Let me ask you something. Y'all know who Tyrese Halliburton is? Some of y'all don't know. Tyrese Halliburton. Y'all may not know him. He's a, a professional basketball player. He plays for the Indiana Pacers. And Tyrese was a member of the 2024 gold medal U.S. Olympic basketball team. That's impressive. Can I tell you something? Tyrese didn't play at all. He didn't play at all. Sat on the bench the whole time. You know what he had to say about it? Let me show you what he had to say. He said this. This is him and his medal. He said, when you ain't do nothing on a group project and you still get an A. (laughs) When you didn't do nothing on a group project, and you still get an A. In other words, we haven't done anything to be victorious, but yet somehow we still win. Amen? Amen, baby. Where's that baby? Amen. I see that baby back there. Amen. Um, so here it is. I'll close out with this one. Here it is. Uh, last verse. Wow. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David, woo, watch this, y'all. David ran over, since he's still running, pulled out Goliath's sword from his sheep. David used it to do what? Kill him him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Say, cut it off. 
so I can't kill you. So here it is. So David ran over and he stood over the Philistine again. He took the sword out. He drew the sheep out and cut off his head. Why did David do this? Because David made sure that the enemy was dead. Yeah. Y'all see that? Right. See, nowhere before does it say that the stone killed him. Right. It says the stone sunk into his forehead. He was probably messed up. Stone says his stone made him fall over. But the Bible doesn't say he got hit with the stone and he died. No. We're talking about no. Here it's very clear that this is where he's killed. In other words, David made sure the enemy's dead. Can I tell you this morning, church, we cannot mess around with our spiritual enemies. Right. We must kill them dead. Right. We must make sure they are done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> David used his own sword to cut off his head. I know that there's some of you here I'm looking around the room, I can tell. There's some of you that you remember those old cheesy slasher movies from the 1980s. Y'all know Friday the 13th or Nightmare, you know, all these. Right, right. I'm not a fan, but you know, back in the 80s, I guess I watched some of them. But you know, out of anyone I ever watched, the plot was kind of always the same, right? And this is what would happen, right? You know the bad guy, mask or finger knives, whatever he is. Bad guy, right? You know that as soon as they'd run over the bad guy with a car or throw him out the window or but whatever they would do to him, right? They would do what? They come back. <gasps> we gotta go. Let's get out of here. And they turn and, he's not dead. and they look. He's gone. Right? Yep. Right? Everyone. Yeah. Mass, no matter whatever. They, they're gone. They're not there anymore. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. they're not dead. Uh, right. They're not dead. <laughs> uh, <no>. They're not dead. <clears throat> See, Spiritual warfare is the exact same way. When we got that thing down, we got to cut its head off so it can't kill you. You got to finish the fight. <laughs> I used to be like, when I say into video games, I mean like arcade, like the stand up ones, not the, you know. The ones you have to put a quarter in. Right? I used to love to play this game. Y'all are going to think I'm the worst caster. Are you talking about slasher movies and Mortal Kombat? And yeah, I used to play Mortal Kombat back in the 90s. Right? And Mortal Kombat was this game like you're, you know, you're doing your little karate stuff and fighting. And, you're, and what would happen is at the very end, if you were really good, Right. You would hear the two words, finish him. <laughs> right. Anybody play Mortal Kombat? My man. He know when you when you get him in a bad position and they're. Oh, yeah. That's what like. Finish him. And you go over there and you do some little move and like some crazy sick stuff, like stuff I've never seen before, like like pulling heads out in the whole spine. I mean, I just crazy stuff would happen. But guess what? When he fell, that was it. He ain't coming back. Right? Not coming back. David made sure that Goliath was never getting back up again. It wasn't about that present moment. It was about every moment in the future as well that he could never come back again. I'm talking to somebody this morning. 
Because too many times in our life, we have been in a fight with our enemy. We have been in a fight with our giant. We have slung the stone. We've hit the target. And it appears that the threat is down. But can I tell you that just because we stopped doing something that we saw, oh, we stopped doing this. So the giant's down. <sighs> See, if I'm real with you this morning, <laughs> some of us in here think uh, just because I stopped popping pills and the giant's down, just because I've been, <laughs> I stopped puffing on the pipe. <laughs> The, the addiction giant, he's down. But is his head cut off? Right, right, yeah, yeah. <sighs> we, we stop watching pornography. Yay. He's down. Giant must be done. Is his head off. Yeah, have you finished it? Or is he just laying there? Been three weeks. Is he just laying there? Is he just laying there? We stop. Guess what? I, I, I'm not sleeping around outside of marriage anymore. I'm not married, but I, I'm not sleeping around with anybody. Ah, uh -uh, no, no. Cut the head off. Just cut the head off. So you're gonna. Next time you look for him. He was just right here. It just. I think just because I stopped drinking <laughs> this week. But have I cut the head off? Amen. Amen. Can I tell you, in our spiritual battles, Jesus Christ did not die for us just to wound the enemy. Jesus died and he had complete and total victory over the grave so that we can have complete and total victory over whatever giant is in our life. So when it comes to facing the giants, you need one thing. You know what you need? What did David use? Sword. You need a sword. That's all you need. Because see, the Bible tells me that the word of God is alive and powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. Spiritual warfare, you need to have the word of God to kill and cut off the head of the giant. So, as we close, I want to ask you this morning how's your giant how's your Goliath we all got one is yours decapitated or not is yours just resting <laughs> or are you going to finish you got to take the head off now you may have some other battles some other struggles. You may have some other stuff you're going to deal with in the future, but that one, you got victory over. That one ain't coming back. I may deal with the next one, but that one, nah. -uh. Yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> this one ain't doing no 18 months without a head. No, 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 no. Uh. So this is what I want us to do as we get ready to close our time today. If this word 
well, it's for you. If you look at your life and you say, you know, I'm tired of the same cycle. I do better, I fall back, I do better, I fall back, I do. And it's like the same giant keeps popping his head up. Yeah, you knock it down for a while, but you never cut the head off. Again, I don't know what your issue is. Maybe I named it, maybe I didn't. But, 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 but there's a giant that's intimidating. It's trying to make you doubt, make you have fear that you've run from before in the past. But today, the day is the day that you stop running, that you run toward it. Today's the day you take the sword the word of God, and you cut its head off because the word of God says you are more than a conqueror. So if that's you, if you have an issue, I don't know what it is, I'm not going to ask you. I just want you to stand on your feet wherever you are in the house this morning. I'm speaking to you. This message is for you today. God bless you all. Look at this. Wow. Wow. God bless you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. The very fact that you're standing shows that you have the courage to run toward the giant. The fact that you have the courage right now shows that depending on Christ, you can have the victory. The fact that you're standing shows that you're determined to cut the head off that thing and not have that thing come back. If you're standing, will you just pray this prayer together? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for overcoming the grave. Thank you for giving me the power to overcome my struggle. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the strength. In the name of Jesus, I take the sword of the word of God. And like David, I cut the head off the giant, off the threat, off the habit. I thank you, Lord, that that thing has no power, is dead, and cannot come back to harass me. I thank you, Father, that I'm free. I thank you, Father, that I'm filled. And I thank you, Father, that from this day forward, I walk with the sword of the word of God. Thank you, Lord. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen. Say, cut it off so it can't kill you. Amen. Amen.